Manchester City 4, Bournemouth 0, as advertised, as expected. Stevie Nichol, did we learn anything today apart from City are really, really good going forward? To be honest, I've been trying to think of that for the last half an hour. Have I learned anything from this game? And quite frankly, no. I I expected um, a demolishing. We got a demolishing. Uh, I expect Bournemouth to get relegated because, you know, uh, from back middle to front, they're, they're, they're just okay and they're not going to be good enough to survive. Certainly away from home, they might get some results at home, as you saw against Aston Villa last week. But no, they're, they're going down. And and City are rightfully favourites to win the the Premier League. Mm. You know, I guess I guess a lot of people with story today will be, oh, Haaland doesn't score against a team like Bournemouth. Well, he probably should have done because Phil Foden Oof. can't believe he tried to score. You know, that's that's what your centre forward was there for, just for a tap in. Had he rolled it to Haaland, he would have scored. And of course, Haaland's come away from the game with an assist. So. If anybody wants to complain, uh, they shouldn't. You and I did a lot of kind of Premier League previews over the summer. When we spoke about Manchester City, one of the things we discussed was the problem of trying to defend against Erling Haaland for the opposition could end up benefiting other Man City players because there's extra space. Are we seeing that now, Stevie? <laughs> It's very difficult to turn around and be completely clever and say, oh, yes, we can definitely see that. The truth <laughs> is, against teams like Bournemouth, Manchester City have been cutting them apart, whether they've had a recognised centre forward or not. So so right now, I think it's difficult to say. I think at the end of the season, when we look at the goal scored for Erling Haaland, that will probably tell us um, if anything's changed or not, which I expected to, but it's difficult to dissect it. The fact is, they created a ton of chances. Guess what? They did the same last year. They scored four goals. Guess what? They scored four a lot last year or regularly. Mm. So right now, it is very difficult to turn around and, and try and be clever and say, oh, yes, you can see this and you can see that. Because quite frankly, they're just as good as they've always been. What do you make of the way that they're playing as far as the, the two fullbacks, wingbacks coming forward? cutting inside, seeing a lot of the ball. Is that something you would have liked to have done when you played fullback back in the day, get forward and play a kind of different position from where you start? Um, personally, probably not. Um, <laughs> you know, this this is this is no question a pet thing. Um, and you're kind of seeing Arteta beginning to try and do it at Arsenal with, yeah. um, with Zinchenko. Uh, because obviously Zinchenko under Pep has been doing it for the last couple of years. Um, but it's not quite as straightforward as you think. Uh, it takes a lot of time and understanding. And the way Man City play, I mean, there aren't many teams play that way. So, listen, it works for them. Would it work for other teams? I, I don't know. I guess it's down to it's down to the personnel, to be honest. How do you defend against it? Uh, well, I think you just you have to get numbers behind the ball and don't panic. You know, if you have, if you panic and you start throwing people forward to close the ball too early, then you're going to leave gaps and then the ball's going to be rolled in behind you. So, you know, regardless of how many players they have in the middle of the park at any one time, and regardless of who's on the ball, if you you can't panic defensively, you keep good positions and, and try and deny space. That 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 has always been the case, and that will never change. You can take off a player at half time and you can bring on Jack Grealish. Phil Foden was outstanding. Grealish, $100 million, and he can come on. This is, a, this is not a negative um, kind of attack on anybody else because it's easy to say, well, Grealish had a chance in the first game and didn't do that much when he came on. But the fact that Pep is able to bring on someone like Jack Grealish and you look at some of the players that he was able to bring on is that strength and depth enough, do you think, to be able to compete and potentially win every tournament that they enter? Absolutely. You know, when they step on the field, uh, it's hard to argue that they're not favourites. 
regardless of the opposition. What about going forward for City now? Because it's still about a month before Champions League. Do you expect Pep to have his kind of core team, maybe 9-10 of the same starters every week, and potentially rotate one or two? Or do you think between now and, and the kind of Champions League getting underway, he might give some game time to some others in his squad so that everybody in the squad when the Champions League begins has got some game time on their legs? Well, I guess it depends what side of the bed he gets out in the morning because this guy <laughs> will change anything at the drop of a hat. You know, one minute you think he's got a secure 11 that he's going to play, the next minute it changes, the next minute, you know, somebody who who looked as though they were becoming one of the main cogs. I'm thinking back to the likes of Sterling, uh, particularly last season, um, and then all of a sudden doesn't play for three or four weeks. So they have such strength and depth that at the end of the day, it does kind of seem immaterial who they play because whatever 11 starts knows exactly what the game's all about and they've been producing, not, not recently, but for the last three or four seasons. So, listen, as I said, depends what side of the bed he gets out in the morning, Pep, but now they're a good side. This was always going to be damage limitation for Bournemouth and 3-0 down after 37 minutes. The floodgates looked like they were going to open, but they managed to limit the damage, conceded just one more. City march on at their best, as usual, 4-0 at the Etihad. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.